focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Decoding Business Growth Season 2. I am your host A.B. Ravi. Sometimes simple thinking, simple strategies work better and yield great results than big time investment in innovation and technology. Take for instance the story of Indigo, the low cost airline promoted by Rahul Bhatia in 2006. When Bhatia entered the scene, the space was dominated by established players. But Bhatia decided to concentrate on a few things that mattered a lot to air travelers. For starters, he offered economy plus service at economy rate. Besides, he offered a relatively young fleet that was kept spotlessly clean. This appealed to everybody. But the most important thing he did was to ensure that Indigo flight was on time every time. This punctuality endeared him to business travelers. Result, in spite of the fact it was a no-frill airline, it has become number one player in the country in a span of 10 years. The story of this week's episode is similar in all aspects. Academically strong and professionally sound, Patu Keshwani Chuck is high paying job one fine morning to set up lamentary hotels. Like Bhatia, Keshwani created a new segment in the market which never existed before, the mid-market segment. This segment was price conscious but wanted all the amenities of a five-star hotel and Keswani readily obliged them. That was 2002. Today, Lamentary has emerged as the third largest hotel chain in the country. Take a look at Lamentary's story and you'll know how to weave CSR into your core business and yet keep all stakeholders happy. In many ways, the 57-year-old Patu Keswani has redefined the Indian hospitality industry. To start with, by setting up Lemon Tree, which offers 60% of the amenities that a 5-star hotel would offer at a 50% rate, he created a new segment in the country. Secondly, for a customer-facing industry, he has not only allowed his staff to sport ponytails, but also employed 450-plus differently abled people. This unconventional style shocked many, but customers loved it. So much so that Lemontry enjoys repeat business from 40% of its customers. Little wonder this strong patronization has catapulted Lemontry into the big league. Thus, in a short span of 15 years, it has emerged as the third largest hotel chain in the country, outracing established brands like the Oberoi and Leela Group. Today, the company boasts of 3,200 rooms through its chain of 29 hotels located in 18 cities across the country. And going by the ambitious plans chalked by Keswani, this group is all set to rewrite history. How did a relatively young player attain this glory in a short span of time? To hark back in time, Patu Keswani, who was born into a very cultured family, did his schooling at St. Columbus School in New Delhi. Thereafter, he majored in electrical engineering from IIT Delhi and acquired a master's in business management from IIM Calcutta. With such a strong academic background, he was selected by the Tata Administrative Services in 1983 and placed in the Taj Group of Hotels. He quickly made his mark. In 1990, he was asked to head the Taj Flight Kitchen and then transferred to Taj Mansingh, New Delhi. By 1999, he had taken over as COO of Taj Business Hotels and was running 22 medium-sized non-luxury properties. Impressed with his credentials, the management consulting firm A.T. Kearney lured Keswani with a 1 crore rupee package in the mid 2000s. After a two year stint and fat bonuses, Keswani decided to be his own boss. In 2002, he set up a 50 room lemon tree at Gurgaon and was eyeing a net profit of 1 crore rupees so that he could take time off to play golf and be with his family. I think that in my late 30s, I went through a midlife crisis where I started asking myself what I wanted out of my life for the remainder of my life. 
and uh, so this that started my first move from Tata's to AT Kearney, which was a consulting company, and I wanted to explore uh, a wider a wider part of the world, so to speak, of the commercial world. And when I was in AT Kearney, I realized after a couple of years that consulting wasn't for me. But by then, I had changed. I had experienced so much of the world outside of you know one company or one group that I had this yearning to to be on my own. And AT Kearney, fortunately, gave me financial independence. So. I went into an area where I was interested, which was hotels. There was very clearly a gap in the market, which was linked to the mid-market, because in, 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 in India in the early 2000s, there were only five-star hotels or guest houses, more or less. So there was very clearly latent demand for a mid-market product. So I decided to get in there. Much to his surprise, the response far exceeded his expectations. Sensing that Lady Luck was benevolent, Keswani went on an expansion spree. And not surprisingly, many friends and private equity players backed him to the hilt. What sets Keswani apart is his novel idea of creating a middle segment in the hotel industry. By offering 5-star luxury at an affordable price, Keswani reset the market. This was possible because he cut the average room size to 240 square feet instead of 320 square feet norms followed historically. Similarly, rooms were fitted with built-in beds. The result, the housekeeping staff did not have to clean under the bed and this made it possible for them to clean 22 rooms against the industry norm of 15. Besides, it billed the guests on actuals with 10 to 15 percent surcharges on services like phone calls, fax, laundry, etc. This strategy kept the cash registers ringing. The Pan India average, which is confirmed through many reliable sources, is about 60 61 percent. As against that, elementary last year, the last financial year which got over uh, on the 31st of March, we finished the year at 75 percent. So we have an average occupancy of all our. 30 hotels across India. Having carved a niche for itself, the management decided to adopt the flanking strategy so that it could cater to the entire value chain. Thus was born Lemon Tree Premier, targeted at upscale segments. Lemon Tree Hotel catered to the middle segment, while Red Fox served the economy segment. Besides, it has also forayed into service apartments. This differentiated branding strategy seems to be yielding dividends. Its revenue has grown from 2 crore rupees in 2004-2005 to 359 crore rupees in 2015-2016, while the EBITDA has risen from 1 crore rupees to 145 crore rupees during the same period. Clearly, Brand Lemon Tree has arrived. On that note, it's time for a short break. When we come back, CNBC TV 18's A.B. Ravi chats up with Ashwani Khare of ICSA Securities to find out what makes Lemon Tree tick. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Lemon Tree's value for money model has clicked as its customers are willing to forego luxury ambience and extra frills. CNBC TV 18's A.B. Ravi caught up with Ashwani Khare of ICICI Securities to find out what is making customers check in at Lemon Tree Hotels. This is what he has to say. Take a look. Ashwani, welcome to the show. Ashwani, we begin by asking you, India is the fastest growing economy in the world. If the FDI has any number, all the international players are coming to India. Given this situation, do you think this will give a leg up to the hotel industry? So Ravi, as you know, the growth in the hotel industry is dependent on the GDP and the economic activity in the country. You, we have seen the last two years have been good in terms of as an uptick to the GDP and this is translated into a positive, uh, you know, for the industry, for the hotel industry in particular and resulting into increased occupancy levels which have gone up by really from 3 to 4 percent. This is translated into higher profitability and we believe definitely it will give us a leg up. And because of this, you know, there has been uh, interest from the investors in this sector. 
and investors are now looking to invest in this uh, in this sector at various levels. So they are looking to invest both at the operating level companies as well as you know at the project level. The green 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 projects green. and okay. the companies which invest into real estate, etc. So I think the interest is uh, really reviving. Now that we are in the hotel industry, what is your own take on the lemon tree? Well, lemon tree is a great uh, company, I would say. I think the way they have positioned themselves mm. created a niche in the mid-scale segment where people believe that there's no need for a brand and people are only price conscious. They have created a space for themselves and filled that void which not many people could fill in. And I think you know they have been able to create a brand in that space, offer services which are expected by you know especially the business traveler segment that they target. Yep. They are doing very well. They are the fastest growing chain in India in terms of hotel. And uh, I think they've got an ambitious uh, growth plan because they were, they're supported by a very strong management team and the promoters who have, oh, you know, between the two promoters, they have six decades of experience in this industry. So given all this, I think uh, they are doing pretty well. Uh, you said about they are going at a scorching pace. I believe they already got more than 3,000 rooms right now. They operate more than 3,000 rooms. What I want to ask you is, is this sustainable? So, if you see, you know, currently they are only in about uh, 18 cities in India. Yeah. And therefore, in terms of penetration, they still believe that the mid-market segment, which is the fastest growing segment, rapidly increasing, you know, in, in terms of their uh, size. I think there is there are huge opportunities in other tier 2 cities, which are seeing, uh, you know, gradually industrialization, and which is picking up out there and okay. seeing the traveler demand in those cities. So, they are still to tap. So, in terms of penetration, I don't think they are still even, uh, you know, where they want to be. So there is definitely a uh, yeah, scope for them to, to, to do better. So in terms of challenges at one end of the spectrum, now you have the Airbnb, your OA rooms. At another end, you have the service apartment. Do you think this will pose challenge to somebody like Lemon Tree or a company like Lemon Tree? So Ravi, uh, I think the service apartment caters to a very different set of customers. And the segment that it caters to are the ones large families and groups who want to stay for a longer duration and uh, you know leisure customers these are the people who actually want to stay in a service apartment have their own kitchen yeah. facility etc i okay. think they are quite different from what lemon tree you know expects as their customers who are essentially business travelers who just check in for a night or two and obviously they don't want to have the hassle of making food separately etc yeah. so i think that's a very different segment i don't think there's a challenge at all rather lemon tree is looking to enter into that market and they are already in that market uh, where they can cater to the service apartment customers as well Okay. So, and there are two different distinct segments and they will operate together. I don't see there's a challenge between each one of them. Coming to OA Room, I think OA Room again has a very different set of customers because OA Room caters to uh, clients who are absolutely cost conscious. They want to do a last minute booking. They can actually, they don't mind going to an, and staying in a guest house even so long it's cheap. So to that extent, I think those customers are anyway not the customers what Lemon Tree is targeting. So to that extent, there is no challenge. No but challenge. given the kind of uh, you know the management uh, strength and the bandwidth that we have seen, mm. I think they will be able to overcome any of these challenges, and they really don't pose any threat to the company. Okay, Ashwin, coming back to the finance part. Historically, Lemon Tree has had no issue where money was concerned. They are PE players eagerly investing in this company. Now they are planning for an IPO. What is the reason they are planning for an IPO? Is it an exit route for PE players or for further expansion? So Ravi, you're right. I mean, this company has never had issues with raising capital. In fact, there have been regular capital infusions at various points in time through some of the very marquee private equity investors who have come and invested in the company and partnered the growth of the company. Even the last one, which is the you know Dutch pension fund APG, yeah. has invested in this company and the last tranche of money has come in just in 2015. So they are quite well funded. So I don't think IPO would be something that they will be looking for to raising capital for expansion because they are quite well funded. But uh, IPO route could be considered well for the investors. They have investors who have been there for a long time with them. Okay. And I think it's only uh, you know, fair that fair. they give an exit option to them, exit create an exit route, route yeah. to them. And IPO, you've seen, for a good company, I think public markets definitely provide much higher premium than the private markets. True. And That's therefore, true. it could be considered as one of the ways which is quite lucrative in terms of getting an exit for the private equity. So looking at the company, the current growth phase, where do you see the company five years from in terms of rooms in terms of sales in terms of profitability so as i said you know the company will be consolidating its position as a leader after establishing the brand of lemon tree in the mid market segment the company is now through the own room essentially till now they have done the own room uh, own uh, room uh, for themselves yeah. after establishing this brand i think they will move to a 
manage room as well. Okay. So currently they have a strong pipeline of 3,000 rooms, as I said, which is 50% is owned properties and 50% they are negotiating contract management. Now with these two models in place, I am sure they'll be able to far exceed the 8,000 number that they're looking to do by 2018. And uh, they will clearly be the leaders and going forward over the next five years, I would see them as top two players in the Indian hotel industry. Ashwini, thanks a lot for being on the show. Nice talking to you. Thanks, Ravi. Yeah. Pleasure's mine. Well, that was Ashwini Khare's take on the company. On that note, it's time for another short break. At the other end of the break, we take a look at the road ahead for Lemon Tree Hotels. Stay tuned. Welcome back. The whole edifice of Lemon Tree was built on a huge untapped demand. What started as a small dream has now ballooned into a big business. Money per se was not a problem for Case Money. Right from the word go, his friends and private equity players like Dutch Pension Fund APG and Warbach Pinkus have poured money into Lemon Tree. And the reason is not far to seek. In terms of what is distinctive about Lemon Tree, I'd say uh, a couple of things. In, uh, in any hospitality or service business more broadly, I think a customer's connect with the brand ultimately happens at the last point of connect. So, you know, when you are at reception, the person who's checking you in or the person who delivers your food in the room or the person who's taking your order at the restaurant. So, it's very important that all through the organization, the culture of the organization has to be around service delivery and customer service. And I think Lemon Tree has built and continues to build a very unique culture of uh, deep commitment to customer service a very transparent organization within uh, within Lemon Tree, um, you know, a lot of communication in the organization, uh, a very deep social conscience in the organization. You probably heard about some very uh, distinctive efforts they've done about employing differently abled people. Um, and I think all of that uh, creates that unique culture which is important for service delivery. So I think that stands out. The other element I think that stands out for Lemon Tree is they are in a business which is a capital intensive business and one of the abilities to get ahead in that business is to raise enough equity capital to be able to continue to build even when the cycle in the market is not good. And I think Lemon Tree did uh, a great job in accessing institutional capital of the variety that Wobber Pincus and others provided such that in the last three, four, five years when the market cycle was weak, they continued to build their network. So that now when the market cycle is actually improving, they have a large network available that hopefully they will be beneficiaries of. And I'd say the last thing in terms of uh, what's distinctive about them is, you know, in a business that if you think about real estate development or hotel developments, it's not seen as a very transparent business. There are land deals and all kinds of things. And I think they've brought a very high level of governance to that business. The trust, faith and funding from private equity players have indeed made it possible for Lemon Tree Hotels to grow from strength to strength. But despite growing at an astonishing pace, Patu Keswani has kept his feet firmly on the ground. And that's visible from his actions. 15% of its 3,600 employees are differently abled. In other words, 470 employees are either physically or economically challenged. This is unheard of in the service sector. For being a hotel with a big heart, it has won the national award from the President of India several times. I would like Lemon Tree as a, to have a social objective. And right now our social objective is that we are India in the hospitality space, the largest employers of what we call opportunity deprived Indians. So who are opportunity deprived Indians? These are basically Indians who because of an accident of birth have been born in the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, and have therefore had a lack of access to opportunities. Okay, yeah. so the kind of uh, disadvantage they face is it's either an economic impairment or it's a social impairment or it is an educational impairment or it is a mental or physical handicap. Exactly. So these are the five areas we look at. We currently have nearly 1,000 employees from this background. Out of about 4,000 employees that we have, 1,000, 25% of the company is from this background. Uh, we have 500 employees with physical disabilities in our system. Okay, I think we have close to f over 400 employees who are speech and hearing impaired. 
So what we are trying to do is, as an organization, as an economic organization, we are trying to have a social objective, which is to employ people who would otherwise be unemployable. Besides being sensitive to people, it is also sensitive to the growing needs of customers. It is ready with an action plan to own and operate over 8,000 rooms through a chain of 60 hotels to be located in 30 major cities by 2017-2018. For this, Keswani has formed a joint venture, Carnation Hotels, with industry veteran Ratan Keswani. We currently have about 3,500 rooms. They are doing very, very well. We have very high occupancy. Uh, right now, our problem is price. Okay, so I'm, I'm talking about today. Now, going forward, we are constructing about 3,000 rooms. Uh, we also have in the pipeline another 2,000 rooms, and that's how we're going to hit 8,000. It is fully funded. This entire program is fully funded. We are not looking at any external capital. And I don't see it as a problem to execute. Okay, because we've got three more years, uh, 16, 17, and 18. The real challenge for us is that uh, how do we monetize our assets now? Because what's happened is that out of these 8,000 plus rooms, 5,500 to 6,000 rooms are owned by us. And uh, what we are evaluating is, is there a way to, uh, to go a little more asset light? Clearly, the maverick Patu Keswani, who too spotted a ponytail once upon a time, has rewritten the rule book of the hospitality industry. If the past is any indication, there is no stopping this indefatigable Keswani from achieving his next big dream of becoming Asia's largest mid-market hotel chain. Well, it is a hotel with large heart. What appealed to me about Keswani is his conviction of providing employment to a 450 differently able people, that too in the hotel industry where customers are very discerning. His action has indeed transformed the economic profile of the needy. All I can say is make Keswani strive increase. On that wishful note, it is time to say goodbye. See you next week with another interesting episode. Till then, keep watching CNBC TV 18. Innovate. Enable.